Hey guys, you're watching Danski, and in the next 12 minutes, you're going to learn how to professionally cut out and retouch a product, all in Adobe Photoshop. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop, and you can see I have an image of a car. First, I'm going to select the pen tool, and you can press cap locks on the keyboard if you'd like a more precise cursor. And now using the pen tool, I'm going to draw a path around the product. And to draw a path with straight lines, it's as simple as click, 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 and you essentially create a straight lined dot to dot. However, if you have curves in your image, like I do in this example, you want to click and hold to drag out the curve and adjust the curvature. And then if you click again, it will try to complete that curve as accurately as it can. If you'd like to follow up a curve with a straight line, you need to hold Alt or Option and click on the anchor point. Then you can follow up the curve with a straight line. Now, that was a lot of words. Hopefully it makes sense. Once you understand that, it's just the same technique around the entire outside of the product. So as you can see, I'm speeding this up here because it will take a long time. I say a long time, it'll take about a minute, but if you don't wanna watch this, you can skip to the next section using the timestamps in the description. However, if you would like to sit here and watch me pen tool the entire car, well, that's fine too. Okay, so we've pretty much reached the end of the universe and our known existence. And I'm going to click and drag on that final anchor point to complete the entire path. There you go, you can see the whole thing. And now we've done the outside of the product, we can zoom into the other areas that need to be cut out and we can pen tool these separately. Now, as you can see, I'm pen tooling lots of individual paths. If I need to select one in particular, I can use the path selection tool and simply click on a path to select it or hold shift and click to select multiple paths. And if I go up to this icon here and select subtract front shape, this will essentially knock out the selected paths from the main work path. And now that's done, it's just a case of repeating those exact same techniques for any other areas on the product that need cutting out. Once again, you can skip ahead or just sit back and relax. Okay, so with all the paths around the spoiler selected, again, I'm going to select subtract front shape. And now we've pen tooled the entire product. We can switch over to the paths panel and you can see we have the work path. Double click the work path and give it a name to save it. And because I've spent ages cutting this out, what I'm going to do is go file and save because whilst a JPEG is a flat image, it can actually contain data related to a path, which is great because if I ever need this image again, the path is saved with the JPEG, so I don't have to cut it out ever again which is great. Okay, so now we've completed the path, we can go back to the paths panel, select or deselect that path, and then use the path selection tool if we ever need to select a specific piece of path again. Okay, back to the layers panel. And next I'm going to go to file and down to new. I'm going to create a document size of 3840 by 2160, basically 4K, and click create. Now I'm going to switch back over to my car image, double click the background layer, give this a name and click OK. Now I can go back to the paths panel, hold command or control over the thumbnail and click to make a selection. You'll see the marching ants appear and I'm going to go to select, modify and contract and contract that by somewhere between one to two pixels. 
Now I'm going to do the same again, but instead select feather and feather it by the same amount. And then finish up by adding a layer mask from the bottom of the layers panel to cut out the product. So essentially what just happened was I made the selection, I contracted the selection by one pixel, I feathered it by one pixel, just to give it a bit of softness because cutting products out with the pen tool is so precise and perfect that it actually gives the product a really hard edge around the outside, which can look quite unrealistic. And lastly, just adding a layer mask to mask that selection. Now I'm going to duplicate the layer with Command or Control J, and then right click on the layer mask and select Delete Layer Mask and then rename this layer Shadow. Next, select both layers, right click and select Duplicate Layers, and from the drop down, select the untitled document that you just created, or I just created. And if I switch over to this document, I can then select each layer individually, right click and select Convert to Smart Object. Now with them both selected again, I can go to Edit and down to Free Transform, and hold Shift and scale this down pop it in the center like so, and then double click or press return to set that transformation. Next, from the bottom of the layers panel, I'm going to add a solid color adjustment layer. This is for the color of the background, and I'm going to pick a blue for now. Next, I'm going to hide the car layer, select the shadow, and change the blending mode to either darken or multiply. I'm then going to double click on the adjustment layer and change the background color. Don't know why I didn't do this before. We'll go for a nice yellow. And now what we can do is turn the car layer back on and you can see the shadow blends into the background color. So again, let's select the shadow, add a layer mask and go over and select the brush tool. From the drop down, I'm going to pick a nice soft feathered brush, bring that brush size down and then using black or white to add or remove from the mask. I'm then going to brush away some of these hard edges. In fact, I'm actually going to brush away a lot of the product because this shadow layer only needs to retain the shadow itself. And because this is underneath the car layer, if I do leave bits of the car in here, it's not the end of the world because the car will sit on top of this layer. So let's select both layers again and press Command or Control G to group these layers together. Give the group a name, car, makes sense. Then hold Alt or Option and drag a layer to duplicate it, in this case, the yellow color, I can then right click and select Create Clipping Mask. This will clip this only to the car layer. As you can see, that looks quite messy with multiple layers inside this group. So if I drag this into the group and then hold Alt or Option between the layers and click, that's a shortcut for adding a clipping mask. And you can see that looks much better. And I can now change the blend mode to color. And the reason I did this is to reflect some of that yellow from the background back onto the product itself. And it just helps the product fit much better in the scene. Now 100% was a bit strong, so I'm just bringing down the opacity a little bit. And if I turn this off and on, you can see the difference. So it's looking pretty good, but those windows need a bit of work. So I'm going to add a layer mask to the car layer, zoom in nice and close, and select the quick selection tool. I'm just going to very lazily make a quick selection of the windows and the headlights, essentially any glass that I would like to be a bit more transparent. I'm then going to select the brush tool and the color black to remove from the mask and bring that opacity down nice and low and then brush over these areas one or more times as much as I need to to make them feel more transparent. And this enables that background color behind the car to just show through a little bit more. And if I hold shift and click on the layer mask, you can see how it looked before versus how it looks now. Next, I'm going to add an exposure adjustment layer from the bottom of the layers panel increase the exposure and decrease the gamma correction. I can then drag this adjustment layer above the car folder to the very top of the layer stack and then select the gradient tool. Click on the gradient slider and then from the drop down, pick the default black to white gradient and click OK. Now with the black to white gradient and the layer mask selected, I can click and drag to allow parts of that exposure adjustment layer to show through. And I can do this again and again with different lengths and from different angles. And in this example, I'm using this technique to add a light source to the upper part of the image. Now that's all done, I can go and add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And from the drop down, I only want to affect the yellows. I can now adjust the hue slider and everything that's yellow in this scene now changes color. 
I can also adjust the saturation and the lightness. Now I'm going to go back to the drop down, switch over to the reds, and now I can adjust the red in the image. And this can be quite a cheeky technique for quickly and easily adjusting color in an image. And because this is an adjustment layer with a layer mask, you can always remove this effect from certain parts of the image by using the brush tool and just brushing in with black. And if you'd like to do the opposite and add it back into the image, just switch that color to white and you're good to go. So you can see for this particular image, this part of the car was just a bit too green with that adjustment layer. So I'm bringing back some of the red. And you're also going to see me do this for the tail lights in a moment as well. Also remember that when you're masking, you can quickly switch between black and white by pressing X on the keyboard. So if you do make a mistake, you can just press X, fix it and carry on. So it's all looking pretty good. And now that I've set up the entire scene, I can go back into all of these adjustment layers, make some final tweaks and work towards a final design. And this is why it's definitely worth learning about layer masks and adjustment layers, because it gives you much more flexibility when working on projects like this in Photoshop. And there we go, that wraps up the video. So we started with the pen tool and we finished up with a bit of Photoshop magic. So if you enjoyed this one, you've got the old subscribe button. You can ring the bell for notifications. Take care and I'll see you next time. <laughs>